everyone. Welcome to the Kitsula Show. Today, I'm going to show you how easy it is to assemble your own computer. These are all of the parts we'll use to assemble our computer. I will show you the parts one by one. This is a CPU. It is the brain of the computer. We are using the Ryzen 3950X. This CPU is great for productivity as well as playing some games. This CPU will go into this motherboard. We have chosen the ASUS Crosser 8 Hero Gaming Motherboard and it is just excellent for its price. The thermals and VRMs, which is the voltage regulation management, is just great. For our memory, we are going with the 32GB Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 3200MHz RAM. AMD recommends using a liquid cooler for their Ryzen 9 CPUs. We are using the Corsair 8115i Pro RGB liquid cooler, uh, which has a 280ml radiator to keep our CPU cool. For our graphics card, we will be using a MSI GeForce RTX 2060 Super. Finally, we're going to talk about our case and power supply. For our case, we have chosen the NZXT H510i uh, case. And for our power supply, we are using the EVGA 750 watt platinum power supply. Now, we only need a screwdriver. Let's start unboxing all the components and let's start assembling. The power supply we are using is a modular power supply. This means you can only choose to connect the wires you need. This helps us do a cleaner installation. And this is our actual power supply unit. This is a 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. The Corsair Vengeance kit is a low profile memory, which is not only great value for your money, but also keeps your computer nice and speedy. You need good cooling to cool those monster 16 cores, which dissipate a lot of heat, while keeping the system less noisy. So this is our liquid CPU cooler. AMD recommends using a liquid cooler for this Ryzen CPU. The radiator on our cooler is a 280mm size. This was the maximum size we could fit in our case. You can choose to go with a 360mm radiator if you can fit it. This will sit on top of your CPU and cool it using the built-in radiator fluid just like cooling your car's engine. This cooler comes with some additional connectors to monitor your cooling performance using software. You also need fans to pull cool air from outside and push it through the radiator. And this causes cooling with a push-pull mechanism, where cool air comes in and hot air leaves. This unit comes with two 140mm fans. If you do the math, 140 times 2 is 280, which is why this radiator size is 280 millimeters. For a video card, we are using an NVIDIA RTX 2060 Super, which has an excellent price to performance ratio for both content creation, like what we are doing now, as well as playing games in HD resolution. This video card has built-in fans, which are also quiet and only turn on if needed. And now, presenting the brain of our computer, the CPU, our central processing unit. Remember to not touch the top or bottom sides. You should hold the CPU from the sides only. The Ryzen 3950X is a powerhouse of a CPU, which will plow through productivity tasks like a hot knife through butter. For a boot drive, we will be using an NVMe SSD. The Samsung 960 EVO is old, but it's still very fast. You can use new drives like the 970 EVO if you want to. The first step in assembling is to mount your CPU. Open the latch and hold the CPU with the notch direction as on the CPU socket and put it in. You should not use any force to mount the CPU. It should just fit in. 
close the latch when done. It's now time to install the memory or RAM. Position the RAM so that the notches align with those on the motherboard and push it in gently. Secure it with a side latch. Install the next memory module in a similar way. We can now proceed to install the NVMe SSD. Remove the screws as you see here to open up the M.2 slot for the SSD. NVMe SSDs on an M.2 slot are fast and silent. They are great for loading your operating system or for tasks like video editing. This motherboard has a fan shroud that must be removed before removing the plate above the SSD. Remove the screws as you see here to open up the M.2 slot for the SSD. Push the NVMe SSD at an angle as shown here. Then, secure the SSD with a screw. Now, you can screw the plates as well as the fan shroud back as it was earlier. We are now installing two NVMe SSDs. One for the Windows OS and one for our video editing needs. The next step is to secure the radiator and fan for keeping our CPU cool. The radiator is just like what you see in a car and circulates coolant over the CPU block to the radiator and keeps the CPU cool. Remember that AMD recommends liquid cooling for this very powerful 16-core CPU. Secure the fans on the radiator first, paying attention to the arrow for the airflow. You want the fan blowing air away from the case and outside. We have designed a push-pull airflow which pulls cold air from the back of the case and emits hot air outside the case. Each fan has four screws and we have two 120mm fans to cover this 240mm radiator. Our next step is to install the CPU block, which will sit on the CPU and make contact with it. Remove the default Intel bracket and put in the AMD bracket. Just put it in the notch and twist it to secure the bracket in place. Before we add the CPU block, we need to install the motherboard on the case. Put in the motherboard so that the exterior connectors align and then place it flat on the case. There are several screws you'll need to use to secure the motherboard, so make sure you take the time to do so. We then install the radiator on the case and secure it with the hand screws and tighten it with a screwdriver. Back to the CPU block. We also need to install a couple of connectors to hold the CPU block in place. There is a bottom part that is kept in place with a couple of top screws. Finally, connect the USB connectors for the liquid cooler to the motherboard. This NZXT case also has a side panel that must be removed before installing any add-on cards like the graphics or video card. We will remove a couple of expansion card brackets, as our card may need one or two. Push in the graphics or video card and secure it in place. Make sure you use the X16 PCI Express slot, which is usually indicated by a different color and is in the center of the motherboard. Since we only use one expansion slot, we can put the first one back in place. 
Then remember to secure the graphics or video card with a screw. We are now going to install our hard drives, which will let you store large amounts of data. While not as fast as SSDs, hard drives have moving parts that make them slower and noisier, but have tons of room to store all your large files and data. Slide in the 3.5 inch serial ATA or SATA drive into the hard drive case. We are using two drives. Then screw in the hard drives in place inside the cage. At the bottom of the case, you will see an air filter. We will be installing our power supply with the fan pointing towards the filter. This is a 750 watt power supply and is enough to power all components used in this motherboard. Secure the power supply unit or PSU with four screws. Now connect the SATA power connectors and SATA data cables to the hard drives. You will also need to connect a lot of other cables on the motherboard by looking at the user manual. And we are done! Enjoy your newly assembled computer, and if you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe, like, and share. See you later!